this I actually got from a guy uh, in a Discord chat last night. And again, to say, yep, see the frame of reference and how it works. And this is exactly what Professor Dave was trying to say. You fire this thing and yeah, the object inside of it keeps the same inertial uh, trajectory. And of course it pops right back into itself, right? But if you were to do this very same thing on a circular track, as soon as it popped out, then the little canister below it would curve off to one side, you know, to the right or to the left, and the ball would just fall on the ground, right? That is the problem, and the ballers will try and do this to you every single time. They'll use this stupid example um, to try and prove curb linear forces or AKA Coriolis effect, right? Which as we have just seen is nothing more than an illusion. Uh, it, it, it is, there is nothing acting on, there was nothing acting on that ball in the first place. Um, and so, you know, what do you say to that? All right, so one thing that I wanted to look up, uh, that, that I did look up, and let's see, I don't think I put it in here, but it doesn't matter. I started looking up, um, you know, incidences of uh, people that would fire guns into the air, right? Um, and believe it or not, there is a surprising amount of news reports. You can just, you know, uh, Google uh, firing guns in air. And what you'll get is you'll get all these people that um, were injured because of the gun, um, the bullet coming back down at a rate of up to like 500 miles an hour and literally penetrating their skin, injuring them. In one case in India, um, there were a, several people killed at a wedding reception right? Because they were do, using celebratory gunfire for the wedding, right? So this is absolutely rampant everywhere. Well, you know, I started thinking about that. And it's like, well, wait a second. If, if you're firing stuff off in the air, the Coriolis should be taking effect and they should be landing, you know, somewhere really, really far away. Um, and ironically, <laughs> that is not the case. So what we came up with is these guys, all right? Now, many of you may or may not have seen this, but what these guys are doing, um, I'll just kind of play this in the background and let's get up to a point, is they're taking a 50 caliber rifle, right? And they're firing shots straight up into the air, right? Now it's funny because it, when I mentioned this to, on, on uh, Ranty's, in Ranty's chat, when I posted this before, one of the Glober trolls came back and said, uh-uh, Bob, it, it can't work when you fire it straight up. It has to be fired uh, at an angle away. Uh, and that's when the Coriolis effect uh, actually happens. It's like, no, I don't think so, because in your model, the Earth is spinning underneath it, and that's the whole reason for the Coriolis effect, right? Um, and of course, other times they'll also say, well, no, that because the, the Earth is, the atmosphere is spinning with the Earth. And so they will change the story endlessly, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, right? So let's listen to these guys. Uh, let's see what happens, and let's, let's actually listen to this bullet come back down uh, and hit the ground and actually explode because I guess he's got some sort of incendiary tip on it or something. But listen to this really carefully. So here we go. Okay, so he's fired the bullet. Nothing, cabron. Wait. Listen carefully. I'm coming up at 217. You hit that? Yeah. What was that? Stop it. What time is it? 1.50. Okay, so essentially what happened is it took a minute and 50 seconds, and this, this was consistent throughout all the tests that they did, for this bullet to come back down right in their vicinity, right? So a minute and 50 seconds, oh my God. You know, how far should the Earth have turned away from it at that point? Well, it would have been quite a bit. And we're going to show that because uh, Ron Hagberg actually did a video on this, showed us the math. He gave, it, he gave them a very generous uh, advantage uh, by saying that these guys were probably uh, maybe could have been as far as 50 degrees north, which would have diminished that, that uh, uh, bullet traveling under the Coriolis effect. Uh, and it still came back at 21 miles. But I would say that by the looks of this terrain, they're probably closer to around 30 degrees um, latitude, which of course would have put it at over 30 miles away uh, if you do the earth rotation. So they do it again, and let's go up here. And this time it actually lands 
and damn near hits him. I mean, it, it lands so close to them, it's ridiculous. So uh, let's go. There we go. He's going to fire him off. Oops. And let's listen. Let me look at these one minute. That's right, can you hear me? Yes. Can I hit one minute in 20 seconds, let me know. Okay. Okay, now they did make a, a, a cut in the, the thing for brevity, but it timed out at a minute 50. And here comes the bullet. All right, so here's the thing, right? These guys are not flat earthers. They're probably ball believers, but that's not no, even an Mexican. issue. Yeah, they're Mexican. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and this could have been done in Mexico for all we know, uh, regardless. Um, so they have 2.05 million subscribers. This video has been seen 8.7 million times. They have no dog in this race as far as trying to prove uh, Coriolis at all. The only thing they were looking for was how long does it take for a 50 cal bullet to fall back down? The answer consistently every time that they ran this was one minute and 50 seconds. Okay, so now let's go, oh, and, let's go and listen to Ron Hagbird's analysis of this and do a little bit of math. And uh, let's see where the heck is that uh, Coriolis effect. Here we go. The bullet was in the air for one minute and 50 seconds. Now, if you do the math, um, I used this website on the other uh, video I made about these guys with the crossbow, and now this site is gone. But um, it tells you the speed of the Earth at different latitudes, and uh, here in North America, we're around 30, 40 degrees, something like that. So I was going to give it the benefit of the doubt and go with 700 miles an hour. So that's between 40 and 50 degrees. Um, you know, the closer they are to the equator, the worse it is for the globe. Yeah, so between 40 and 50 degrees at, at only 700 miles an hour, he has given them a pretty substantial advantage. Like I said, I think by the looks of the terrain, it is either in the southern United States, which would be closer uh, you know, to 30, which would be almost 900 miles an hour, or it could be down in Mexico closer to the equator, uh, with going up to that ultimate figure at the equator of 1,037.5 miles per hour rotation, right? But hey, it doesn't matter. The point comes across very clear, even though Ron was very generous in the latitude that he gave them. Let's continue. But so if you go, said 700 miles an hour, divide that by 60 minutes, I'll give you 11.6 miles per minute. Divide that by 60 seconds. That means the Earth is moving at 0.19 miles per second. And they said that bullet was in the air for 110 seconds. A minute and 50 seconds is 110 if it's right. So multiply that times 110. That bullet should have landed 21 miles away from their location. If the Coriolis effect was real and snipers had to account for it, you know, they say uh, everybody's heard the story that the sniper has to account for Coriolis. Complete, utter nonsense. If there was Coriolis, that bullet would have landed 21 miles away. They never would have heard it hit back towards them. 
Well, you know, I can't say it any better than that. That is absolutely true. Now, the Globers will now come back. I guarantee you this will be the counter argument. Well, the reason it didn't is because the atmosphere moves in lockstep with the Earth. Well, then in that case, you don't have another, a separate frame of reference. So it's funny to watch them go back and forth between, you know, claiming this, you know, supposed factoid, which by the way, we have just seen by both of these maps, uh, the, the AE map and the uh, globe earth map, right? Uh, whatever the heck, where are they? These two, right? That the atmosphere is not in lockstep with the earth, period. <laughs> Whether you want to call it that or not. Uh, this, I mean, their own maps, uh, the one even that they kept up on nullschool.net, thoroughly disproves it. There is nothing in lockstep with the rotation of the Earth at any hectopascal value, no matter where you go. So the fact that they even claim this is utterly ridiculous. It's simply not true. And this Coriolis effect is no force. It is an illusory, apparent uh, trajectory that the ball or the bullet or whatever they want to say is actually taking um, and it's just it's just a lie point blank straight up what do you guys think 